Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Royal Philips Electronics is continuing its program of installing more than 100 community light centres across Africa, with six new centres in South Africa. Joanne Taylor reports. The 2013 Philips Cape Town Takara Roadshow is a vehicle for Philips to raise awareness on how healthcare and lighting solutions can enhance life in Africa. The Roadshow will visit 18 cities in 17 African countries while Philips engages in a dialogue with customers, governments, non-profit organisations and media on the current power challenges in Africa. The company has donated two community light centres to the Department of Energy, which will be allocated to communities that will benefit from community lighting. These light centres are areas of 1,000 square metres, the size of a small soccer field, and are lit using a new generation of efficient LED lighting. The centres create areas of light for rural communities that are without electricity. Philips has committed 1.2 million euros over three years to the project for light centres that are focused on schools closely linked to rural areas and towns in off-grid or semi-grid areas to provide light for communal areas. Well, the LED lighting revolution presents Philips with two um, key opportunities uh, to, to help with the power challenge in Africa. The first one is we can reduce energy. Uh, LEDs are extremely energy efficient, uh, there are many other benefits, uh, but if they were installed across Africa at the current rate, um, we would be able to save the, ex the equivalent of 35 power stations. The second area that we can help with is the area that has no electricity, the 600 million Africans who live without electricity and without, I would say, wide-scale lighting. Um, when LEDs are combined with solar technology, we can now do extraordinary things. We can light large areas. And we're going to see an example of that tonight, uh, where we're talking about tonight, a thousand square meters. So you can start to think about communal activities in the evening. We're using football to promote the site tonight, but it can be used for healthcare. It could be used for education. You could think about markets. It's enabling life. It's enabling social development. It's a really exciting development. And this is the story that we're going to tell on our roadshow now from Cape Town all the way up to Cairo in the next four months. Other news making headlines this week. Greenpeace Africa launches a 10 kilowatt peak rooftop solar system. Neotel moves to commercially launch LTE and government seeks private sector assistance to deal with water infrastructure challenges. Greenpeace Africa has started up a new 10 kilowatt peak rooftop solar photovoltaic panel installation at its Johannesburg office, which the organization's climate and energy campaigner, Ruth Mschlange, says proves the feasibility of renewable energy in South Africa. Greenpeace Africa today um, has switched on its solar installation, which has got 44 solar panels producing 10 kilowatt peak. Um, um, at, at their peak and um, over, the, over the year we're um, producing an average of about 18,000 kilowatt hours um, and that is enough to sustain um, our office um, during office times. What this installation shows is that it's technically and economically possible. What is holding us back is the lack of political will. Coming back to if the national um, bodies were to say we want rooftop PB, they would ensure that the legislation is streamlined right through every municipality. Where, so it's not just one municipality that becomes supportive, but right across the whole country we have supporting legislation that is, um, is, is governed at the national level. Converged Communications Network operator Neotel is preparing to start launching commercial long-term evolution or LTE services from July to September this year, with the technology initially being concentrated within the Gauteng region, serving customers through 50 LTE-enabled base stations. It was about a year ago that uh, we looked at LTE because we, we always look at newer technologies that come. So we ran a POC for about six to nine months, which concluded in about Jan, Feb of 2013. And what the POC showed us is that you can actually get um, speeds up to 70 megs on LTE. Now, our core infrastructure is fiber. Fiber optics, you cannot uh, have any other inf uh, medium that can give you better, faster speeds, and it's light and glass and color. But as an alternative, um, you do look at other technologies. So we have WiMAX, microwave, and now LTE to provide ubiquitous 
data and technology solutions to our customers. So LTD is going to be another complementary capability that we will have built. The Department of Water Affairs expects the private sector, non-governmental organisations, churches and other entities in South Africa to reduce the country's water loss by half in 2014 by working with municipalities. The water infrastructure was we still face some challenges because we have inherited um, aged infrastructure that is there. Of course, it has gone on for years. And the second one is the population growth, that especially in cities, towns, where everybody from the village, when they, they go to look for employment, that gives stress to the, our water infrastructure. And those two are the main challenges of our department or government in water affairs, but we are not looking at it and doing nothing. We have budgeted for that, that we have to uh, replace the old infrastructure. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.